pilot episode number two, baby. What's going on, guys? I am Chase. Uh, it's your boy, Patty Rick. Patty, what are we driving today? We are driving a 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness with a CVT. Yay! Yay! It's actually my car. It's Chase's car. Great. All right, let's lay some stats down real quick. Patty, what kind of power are we looking at in this We thing? got 260 horsepower to all four wheels through Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive system. What about torque? Tor torque? Torques. Oh, I want to say it's 272. And what is powering all of that numberage? All that numberage is powered by Subaru's 2.4 liter flat four turbocharged engine. It's in the Outback, it's in the Outback XT, it's in our Wilderness Edition, obviously. It is also in the Subaru Ascent, and it is kind of the engine that they used in the WRX. The WRX has obviously changed with a decent bit of stuff, but it's all essentially that same 2.4 liter. Also, this thing is peppy. Yeah, she boogies. She I, boogies. <laughs> coming from my old ass Jeep and then getting into this and I'm like, oh, you don't think a car this wide would boogie like it Yeah, does. like a big old <laughs> station wagony thing that like your grandma would drive right. that can put you into your seat pretty well. It is far more fun than I think anybody buying a Subaru is going to expect. Yeah, I think this is for, I feel like the market for this thing is very much get to your campsite because everyone knows Subaru outdoorsy people. Which... <laughs> I don't think we can get around the fact people know yeah. that Subaru is the whole outdoorsy thing. Yeah, so it's for people who want to get to the campsite and maybe go a little bit further, go on to maybe a little bit more technical of a trail. Right. But with the amount of power this thing makes, you could argue that there are some people who are maybe have had a WRX or one of the STI models over the past right. and are graduating. Maybe they've got a family and kids or what have you, or they just need some more cargo space and like hatchbacks like I do. I'm just a big fan of wagons. Absolutely. Same. And, you know, you've got a ton of utility, but it's you still want to have all that fun horsepower. Absolutely. Which is great. All right, Patty, uh, numbers are cool. Uh, how much gas we looking at as far as MPGs? So this 2.4 liter turbo engine uses a little bit more gas than the standard Outback does. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at about 22 city, 26 highway, which is still really good for a full size SUV like this. Um, all that's done through Subaru CVT. Of all the CVTs on the market, hands down the Subaru CVTs are the best in my opinion. Okay. Um, there's been some other brands have tried it for years and years and just not had good luck. I really love the Subaru CVT. It's really smooth. It doesn't make weird noises all the time. Um, and it does have an eight speed manual mode, which is nice. So if you're trying to play around with it, you can do that and also just make sure you're in the highest gear so you get the, get the best MPGs possible. I'm not gonna lie. When I got the car and I saw the MPGs, I expected them to be a little higher, but uh, my wife and I have put over 10,000 miles on this car already and the gas mileage feels great. Like if you're, especially when you're on the highway, oh, yeah. bro, you go forever. Yeah, it's a, it's a large fuel tank. I wanna say it's, uh, 15.3 or 15.6 gallons. It's a pretty decent bit. 18.5, Whoa, my 18 guy. 18.5. <laughs> well, there you go. Large so, fuel tank. I only know this because of the little screen on the front. When we do a fill up, if we're, and we've been on highway because it obviously uses your average yeah, yeah. Uh, MPG when it, you fill it up, 420 miles in between fill ups. Oh, when you're three, on like the your distance to empty? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that's dude. awesome. It's, it's so far that you will have to stop to stretch before, unless depending on how you drive, <laughs> uh, you will have to stop to stretch before this car will run out of gas on the highway. Jeez. Don't know how big of a deal this is on this car, but towing capacity. So towing capacity on, on these full-size SUVs has been kind of a weird thing for Subaru for a long time. For a while, the standard Outback was kind of the cream of the crop. Now the new Ascent is out, which is their full-size SUV. The one that's slightly bigger. Yeah, a little bit bigger, a little bit taller than this guy. But the Wilderness Edition Outback we have today is really, really cool because it will still tow 3,500 pounds, which is plenty. Especially for me. I'm looking at it for a motorcycle. Like, I would want to do yeah. like a small trailer and a bike. That's yeah. totally enough. You could do a small enclosed trailer and a bike or two or three even yeah. and get away with it if the trailer's light enough. It's an aluminum versus a steel. All right, so another big deal for the Subaru stuff is interior space, which is personally one of the huge reasons that my wife and I chose to go with this car. What kind of space are we looking at? So really cool thing, it's, it's a hatchback. It's a wagon. You've got a really large trunk here. The 
back seats fold down flat, which is great. So the when the back seats are up, your rear cargo space is 32.6 cubic feet. Right. And then with those back seats down, you're looking at 75.7 cubic feet. The back seats also fold down in a really cool way. Later on in the video, we'll be outside the car. We'll show you guys that. But oh, is it, it got the... Uh -huh. Oh, cool. Yeah, we'll show you <laughs> so cool. Stay tuned for the video. We'll show you how the seats come down. Okay, uh, I think that's all the stats. Uh, we do have this big screen in here, which... Um, I have a lot to say about it. Yep. Yeah, I know you're very opinionated on this screen. I am as well. Um, there's a couple really cool things about this screen that I really, really like. There's a couple things that I really, really don't like. What it is mean? really big. It is big. It and looks fine. I, I, I got no, I'm, I'm spoiled after your truck. I know, right? I sh the, tundra, not, the Tundra, <laughs> we should have done these in the other order. We should not have reviewed your truck before we reviewed the Subaru. Uh, I think the screen is great. I love the technology and we can dig into the technology of the car uh, throughout the video. Screen looks great, uh, a little laggy. It's, yeah, yeah. Subaru does a really good job of making screens look very pretty. They do have a, a small assortment of physical buttons and knobs, which is great. Right. I want there to be more buttons and knobs. That's all um, I'm asking. I'm, here's my thing. <laughs> buttons are great. I love the mixture of physical buttons and like digital buttons, right? digital buttons you get a lot more options and you can do all types of things with but there are a few things that I think they should have done physical buttons with and if you look at the center area we've got so much space yeah like you could put so many more buttons there my pet peeve with the car is especially with today heated seats and stuff like that we have a colder day it takes so long to get to the heated seat thing and it make it it it's, irks me. It's, it's frustrating in more than one way. I think my biggest irk with the heated seat thing is I've got to push a button to open the seated, heated seat menu. It lags. Mm -hmm. I then have to push another button to set where I want my heated seat to be. And then to get out of that screen, I have to push another button to get back to the main screen. And it's that's, that's an issue. I don't think it would be as issue if it wasn't laggy because it would feel more tactile. But that lagginess takes you out of that experience and remember you're the driver so you're supposed to be driving while you're doing yeah. all this i like the idea that like on the tundra I, it's a physical button i know where the button is i can tap it i don't have to look for stuff that you need to be changing relatively often and not that you're going to be changing your heated seats often but it's annoying for me as an owner as far as like going into the settings of the car all digital totally fine yeah. like make me dig through a menu i don't care about that but that is probably I guess this is a, a pro for the car. That's my biggest con is the 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 lack of physical buttons on a few of the settings that as an as a driver you might want to utilize relatively often. Major negative of the car yeah. is the screen. It's laggy, it's annoying, but it works good. And it's a portrait style screen, which is really cool. It's very vertical. The Tundra's horizontal. Most screens you're gonna find in a car are gonna be like that landscape style screen. Right. What's really nice about this is the for 2021 and 2022 you can now do full screen Apple CarPlay yes. in portrait mode, which is fantastic because nobody else that has a portrait style screen can do that. I have had some times where Apple CarPlay will not connect, whether like it, at all. And it has to be wired Apple CarPlay. They don't have the wireless. Yeah, Apple the CarPlay. wireless. The Tundra's got the wireless. My Crosstrek had a lot of issues with the Apple CarPlay. It is true. And I hate to interrupt you, but we're oh, at, yeah, No, no, interrupt me, please. We're at my favorite corner. We need a name for this corner. Guys, let us know in the comments. This is Patty's fast corner. Mine yeah. is obviously the highway entry. Yeah. So, uh, Patty, let's, uh, we're oh, gonna, yeet turn. Uh, yeet? Yearn. Yeet! <laughs> what I love is you've got paddle shifters. They're so oh, good. No. <laughs> They're so good. I love the paddle shifters. <laughs> oh, sheesh. <laughs> It's oh. all drive, so you can. It's all wheel drive, there is a difference. <laughs> Why do we review cars that don't, like they look one way, and then you drive them and they have a capability that is far surpassing what they look like? Uh, we're two for two on that. We're two for two, <laughs> we're betting a thousand on things that look cool and perform even better. I don't, the driving <laughs> of this car It's is, so good. I it's so love good. it so much. I came from the old car my wife and I had where a 2012, Jeep Compass, bottom of the barrel. I know, I know, I know, I know. Look, 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 look. it had 120,000 miles. It would have kept running had we not got run into. It was fine. It was f fine. Fine is the perfect explanation <laughs> yeah. of As that Jeep. As a car that if, gets you from place to place, it was fine. 
this it made vehicle, it was a great camera car it was fairly it was. comfortable this thing is actually fun to drive yeah this and thing I, gives me the giggles i know which and has, it's a long wagon <laughs> it's it's I love Subarus, especially the Outbacks and like the Crosstrex if you don't need something quite as large. Right. Is that it makes you giggle. I like the form. They look very pretty to me. I, I really, they're very cool cars and they function perfectly. Right. They are like the trifecta of performance, function, and form. And it just, it doesn't get better than that. So uh, while we have time, <laughs> What makes this a wilderness versus a regular Outback? So, okay, that's a really good question. So the standard Outback and most of Subaru's um, kind of SUV crossover product um, have 8.7 of standard, 8.7 inches of standard ground clearance, which is fantastic. Right. That's for reference, more than Forerunners have. It's more than. It's more than a Forerunner. It's more than Forerunners Jesus. have. Jesus. But the Wilderness Edition is lifted almost a full inch. It's up to 9.5 inches. So you know, 0.8 inches of lift, which is fantastic. Gives you that little bit of extra ground clearance. And then in turn with the Yokohama Geolander all-terrain trail tires they have on here, right. it adds a little bit of extra ground clearance as well, which is super cool. Big benefit of both the tires and the lift is obviously better approach and departure angles and a better breakover angle. And that's off-road terms for our off-roady friends. I have no idea what you're talking Hopefully somebody does. Yeah, hopefully somebody will understand what I'm talking about there. But again, with the Wilderness Edition, the front and rear bumpers are different. They've got a lot of extra black cladding on them for if you're out on the trails or whatever, you're rubbing up against a bush or rubbing up against a rock or what have you. You're not worried about the paint on the vehicle. You know, with a lot of off-road vehicles, Jeeps and things like that, you don't want to be rubbing up against rocks and screwing your paint up. And if you're doing that in a crossover or SUV like a Subaru, you're going to ruin your paint. Um, and that's not ideal. So what Subaru did is they built in that black plastic cladding and changed the shape of the bumper to allow, again, better approach and departure angles, a better breakover angle, and you're not going to ruin your paint. I hate to interrupt you. But I know. We're we at... have to race to see how fast we can get to the other side. Yeah. On your marks. I'm not. Hold on. Hold on. Uh uh. You cheated on the first <laughs> one, and I tripped over our audio thing. Oh, you have to buckle up. On your mark. Get set. Go. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> you have to buckle up. You have to buckle up. Whoa, you tripped No. Uh... <laughs> you beat me. I'm in my own car now. I feel good. Yeah. This is great. I want everyone yeah, to know. Yeah, hold on. This is some horse crap. No, this is how professional I am. Tell him. Professional, you mean? Yes. This man has never full throttled his own car before. I was one. I was saving it, and two. Oh shoot! <laughs> oh my God! This is so much better. <laughs> yes. Oh, maybe. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop now. I'm gonna stop. Yeah. I'm, I'm starting to really like this, uh, the thing, the turbo thing we were talking about with your truck. Yeah, I, I had two of the turbos, but I had six cylinders. You've got a single turbo, but you only got the four cylinders. You don't necessarily need this another thing. another wilderness. Oh, they had the Yokohama rack, or not the Yokohama rack, the, the uh, tool? tool rack. Tool rack, yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Oh, that is a modification. Uh, we'll the talk, roof, we the can roof show, rails. Yeah, we'll show about the, the rails that I got into there that I installed. Those are not, they don't come with the car. Yeah, not but, standard equipment. But there's more stuff about this car that makes it a wilderness that we didn't mention yet. Yep, so and another thing that makes it wilderness is it is up top. There's a moonroof. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> there is a sunroof, which is quite nice, but you can get that on any of the Outback models. The ladder style roof rack that's up top, and um, ladder style is just what Subaru's calling it. It's been reinforced for the Wilderness Edition, which is super cool. Um, same reinforcement that you find on the Wilderness Edition Foresters as well, but it's got a ladder style roof rack. It's got a 700 pound static weight limit, um, and it's got a 220 pound dynamic weight limit. And for those who, again, don't know what any of those terms mean, a static weight limit is the amount of weight you can put on the roof while the vehicle is stationary. And then the dynamic is while the vehicle is in motion, how much weight you can have on the roof. Gotcha. Now, the big reason they did that, and if you saw any of the press launch stuff of these vehicles, is you see them all the time with rooftop tents. So a rooftop tent, stationary, you, your wife, or you know, you and a, your partner, what have you, your, your a dog, you know, a couple of dogs, can climb into a rooftop tent and the car's gonna hold it no problem. You don't have to worry about stressing any of the roof rails or stressing the frame of the vehicle. Right. But then when it's empty, 220 pounds is gonna be plenty of weight while you're moving. 
as long as the rooftop tent is obviously folded, stowed, and empty, you're able to cruise around. Most rooftop tents weigh anywhere between 100 and 150 pounds. If you're uh, if you're cruising around, yeah, with if you're cruising the, around with, with in your rooftop fully. tent, <laughs> one, I want to see it. So put it in the comments. I need a link to the video. I yeah. won't believe you. I want to sleep in. Fun. Shoot yourself. <laughs> is that all of the things that makes the wilderness? Oh, the oh, seats. yet again, no. Still no. <laughs> um, I mean, this is a pretty extensive list. Yeah, like, the, the list of stuff, like, a lot of comp car companies will do, oh, we've got this special edition, and it's like two or three items. Right. With the Wilderness it has, it has edition, yeah, it. it's got a badge, and, like, you get a, a, a logo in the seat. <laughs> you get a cup holder. <laughs> now, that being said, in this Subaru Wilderness, you do get logos in the seats, yep. but the entire seat, the upholstery is totally different. Yep. So, like, the base seat underneath, like, the foam, the padding, the bolstering and everything is very similar to that of the Onyx XT edition, some of the other Subaru Outback editions that are out there. Right. But the upholstering is 100% brand new for the Wilderness Edition. All these copper, Subaru says it's copper, they look gold to me. And I might be colorblind or an idiot, I don't know. Anyway, we've got all these great copper accents. It's in the stitching on the steering wheel, it's in the stitching on the shift boot. You'll see the gold emblem on the, or the gold marker on both the steering wheel and the shifter itself. You've got these cool little Subaru Wilderness door tags which is neat. And then on the exterior of the vehicle, you'll see all those copper accent marks. So another cool thing about the Wilderness Edition is those copper markers on the outside of the vehicle we were speaking about. They are what Subaru calls action items or action points. So on the roof rack, we'll show you right here. I feel like it's a video game. It's right? like, touch this for action. Yeah, press X to engage action item. <laughs> right. um, um, on the roof rack, they show four different tie down points, which you can just attach different stuff to, um, where you're not you're not worried about like looping something around the, the bar that's there. There's an actual hook built into the rack, which is nice. Right. And then on the front and rear bumper, they are the recovery points that Subaru has put on there. Essentially what they are is extra slots for you to screw in that eyelet style tow hook. Is it something I'm super comfortable like doing like a whole like snatch steps, snatch strap style recovery like out of some mud? Not so much. That's what traction boards, max tracks, and a winch are for. Whatever all that is. Um, yeah, off-road stuff. He doesn't do the off-road stuff. That's my world. The truck guy, that makes sense, right? They're plenty enough to, if you wanted to mount you know, your eyelid in there and pull yourself out of some deep sand or what have you that's totally safe for that. They are on the front and the rear, which is quite nice. Mm -hmm. And it makes it nice and symmetrical to match Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive. You see it what would, I did there? Yeah, yeah. It would look so janky if, if it just had one of them one or like... What are you doing? I like them. When they first came out, I was a little iffy on it. Mm -hmm. I was like, these look kind of weird. Not really sure what that's about. And then I learned that they're actually useful. Right. Again, I'm a function freak. It's <laughs> There's no sport mode on these Outbacks. Uh, you don't need it. So the front camera is really neat. Uh, it has little rail systems on the side so you can see where the oh, your like outer your... of your, your tire will be. Oh. But And it automatically disengages when you go over 15 miles an hour. So if you've got your X mode engaged, yeah, you're out you on the trail. If you've got your X mode engaged, if you're on like, there's a cliff. You can actually see if your wheels are straight where your the edge of your tire will be, mm. so you don't fall down a cliff in your Subaru. Oh well, which yeah. No, nobody. Nobody really wants to do. Want to that do being said, if you do fall off a cliff in your Subaru, a Subaru, Subaru would be the decent car. Yeah, to do probably that the in. ideal <laughs> thing to fall off a cliff in. They're extremely safe. Yeah, it's got the really safety thing, and uh, then it can. There's a chance for you to get out. Here, we'll do the we'll do the car thing so we can get your authentic uh, reaction to it. Oh, that's neat. So you see you have yeah. the little red uh, bars, which is pretty neat. I like using that to uh, park or, here's my favorite thing, when I go through the car wash. Oh, you can watch it? I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Heather makes fun of me, but like every time I, I, I enjoy doing the car wash, yeah. I don't know, I'm a child, but I put that on and I can literally watch the little uh, washer things like the go up. Thing like, because everything's white, so you can't see anything. So it's like a little secret cam. I love it. Well, that's cool. cool. Are we going to go super wooing? We're about to go super wooing when we get on this highway. Yeah. Because I get full rain. Yep. Is that a cop? Um, I'm pretty sure that's a cop. Can we go just slow? No, that's not a cop. That's a Nissan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the good spot. <laughs> yes. God. I should probably let up about now. Yeah. Good God. <laughs> I love the uh, suspension on this car. It's when you, so good. When you put it in sport mode, which is just which is just down, pushing the throttle. The, all the whole way. car gets a whole like oh, it lift. Just, it, dude, she squats and she goes. It's 
it does make the car feel a little faster than it probably is, but I love every freaking second of it. Oh yeah, and I think the big thing again with the lifted suspension, the big you know the all-terrain tires. There's not a lot of road noise now that we're here on the highway, which is great. Right. And she also doesn't get a bunch of wheel spin because Subaru's all-wheel drive system just has so much That's grip. That's a good point. And we've got like the off-roady tires. Yeah, and it still just grips and goes. So I will say one thing I noticed when we installed the um, tool rack up top, that does, and we got the like the low pro, I think it's called the Evo one. Mm -hmm. It did add a little bit of wind noise. So any of the noise you hear right now, is almost all of that that tool rack, yeah. that little rail. Because before that, bro, it was silent. silent. Yeah, absolutely silent. Other creature comfort things that we have is adaptive cruise control, uh, work to peach. Yeah, um, called, called, Subaru calls it EyeSight, the Subaru EyeSight system. Yes, and there's two little cameras up yeah, here. Users. We're actually blocking one right now with our camera, so can't show you guys, but we'll show you guys other footage of it. As far as the lane keep, uh, does a pretty good job. The, the key things for the lane keep is as long as the car can see the dotted lines in the middle of the road and the either the dotted lines on the other side or that side, when it can't see that, it gets a little sketch. Okay. So if you're going to, like I have primarily used it uh, for highway most of the time. That's yep. where most people That's are That's where they design it. it to be. One of the things that I really like about the car is you can uh, make it uh, aggressive or more comfortable with oh. how it will increase speed to keep up with the cars ahead of it. Oh, um, cool. So you can make it like more economical where it'll slowly go. If you put it all the way at Eco, you it drives like a super grandma. People in Atlanta, like the, where we are, they will get very frustrated with you. Yeah, if you're not doing you. 15 over the speed limit minimum, yeah. you're gonna get run over. So for what I found to be best, at least in our area, is the middle area to the slightly more aggressive. It's still pretty calm compared to how like a regular person would drive. Sure. But I think it does a really good job. Uh, it has, I think, four different settings for follow distance okay. for the car ahead of you. Uh, it works really well. And the auto braking, while terrifying when it happens, it's a little sensitive, but... But as a safety feature, it's doing its job. Ooh, I love where your blind spot monitor, the thing is it's built onto the mirror externally. Yeah, and it has that black screen on it, so you, can, you can't see it until it's like Until it's like glowing. lit up. Yeah, and uh, it works really well, so it will uh, tell you if a car is coming, so it'll turn you know yellow or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you have your blinker on, it will blink quickly, letting you know, like, hey, for real, don't do what. Yeah, there's something you're over there. You. Don't, yeah. don't do the thing. Uh, so it, it kind of like reminds you with that. I know you had mentioned in our previous video that the elbow slot. <laughs> if you guys notice, my arm is all the way up here. Yeah, I'm used to it at this point because yeah. 10,000 miles on it. But as a, as a guy with rotator cuff problems, it's not comfortable. No, and I guess you could go down here, but down here is too low. Yeah, so, for like me, like as a passenger where I'm like not messing with the steering wheel, like yeah. being all the way down there is fine. I can keep my hand on my leg. But yeah, so the ergonomics are, are great everywhere other than the driver's left arm. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, but it could be just my proportions and where I like it. Yeah, I mean, seat. like, if we, if you and I had longer torsos, it would work, but right. as two different body type individuals, we both don't like that arm spot. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. So, as far as the comfortability, the seat's fully yeah. movable up and down. Yeah, electronic uh, up, down. Back. The electronic lumbar support's nice. Yep. It's not something that is in all cars these days. I feel like it should be. It's not difficult to do. I'm kind of new to that whole thing, so it's a little weird for like the little. <laughs> you like push the button and you're like, I feel weird, but it's comfortable. Yeah. Uh, heated seat options, we were talking about earlier, there are three levels and they get pretty warm. They get toasty and they get toasty fast. Yeah, they do uh, a great job. I do um, really love the, the rubberized. Again, another thing that the Wilderness has is oh, the floor yes. mats. Oh, yes. I love the floor mats. Uh, the rubber floor mats are so good. The all-weather floor mats, Subaru calls them. They are the rubber, so like... Yeah, and they look good. They look good. The little uh, Wilderness logo on there, super cool. Same one that's on the headrest. Speaking of the headrest, I love the adjustability on them. You just yeah. kind of pull them forward. <laughs> yeah, they do a lot. Because like where I'm sitting, like this is with the headrest all the way back, not comfortable. Right. Bring it up two, three clicks or what have you, and it's all of a sudden right where I think I need it to be. Right. I like the, uh, the adjustability of the interior. You can yeah, really there's make it so many things view. you can really play with. One more thing on the floor mats that just a small nitpick. Mm -hmm. uh, the driver's side has a metal spot that it slots into. Yep. That one, the passenger, front passenger, moves over all over the place. Oh. I don't know if it's because I have some level of OCD, but 
it slides up and it's fitted for that area but for whatever reason it'll slide forward i'm always like I, you just I pull you wish it, it had an anchor thing I pull it down. yeah i do that all. i guarantee you if you look at it you can pull it down oh yeah 100 100 so the fact that it's over here i'm like dude just put just pull it over there another cool little technology thing is it has the uh auto dimming rear mirrors which are oh. amazing and we get over-the-air updates, so Ooh, you that's connect nice. the car to your uh, to your home Wi-Fi or whatever. So yeah. um, about a week ago, there was an update. So I just turned the car on, and obviously the car walks you through the entire update process. Mm -hmm. But that was kind of cool. Oh, we didn't talk about the gauges. How do you feel about the gauges? Um, I like the gauges. I mean, they're pretty pretty standard. You know, they're analog gauges. I like that digital screen, the TFT display in the middle. Yeah. Um, a lot of cool kind of features you can dig in there. Right now, it's yelling at us about the eyesight being blocked, so we can't really dig through a lot of it. But That's actually a good point. This car yells at you a lot. Yeah. Like, a lot, a lot. Yeah, Whether you're... it's like every time it sees a new car in front of you, it beeps. Anytime, it, like, literally anytime anything. Like, you, the beeps you guys have been hearing, that. It's a, you, oh, I can see the left lane, but not the right, because yeah, the camera's blocked. If and it, that is getting on your nerves, do not buy this car. I could see it getting on some of my nerves. It personally, it doesn't get on my oh, nerves. Oh, it drives me insane. <laughs> okay, we've touched on damn near everything about the inside of the car. Uh, let's pull over, let's look at the outside of the thing because uh, as we've said, I think it looks good. Yeah, it's pretty. I wouldn't have bought it if I didn't like the way it looks, so let's try it out. We're just two guys driving a Subaru in an empty parking lot. Oh my God, even when you do everything right, the safety of the car, beep. Like, dude, it's beep. cold. It's cold. It's so it's cold. It's windy, because of course it is. We're cause... filming an on four wheels episode. That means it will be windy, and yeah. the weather will not work with us. Yeah. Also, uh, it is very cold, and I can only imagine a way I could become even more of a Subaru of a driven. Subaru. Owner. I mean, I'm wearing a flannel and a multi-layer REI good. jacket. I have an idea to become more Subaru. -y. Subaru. -y? We're gonna go Subarooing in our Subaru. What would be a Subaru video without a puffy jacket so my nipples don't cut through my shirt? <laughs> Guys, it was literally, like not exaggerating, it was in the 60s and 70s last week, and now it's It was 30s. in the 60s and 70s yesterday. <laughs> it's 30 degrees. I think this is part of On I Four live Wheels in videos. Georgia. <laughs> So officially, part of On Four Wheels videos is we have to complain about the weather while reviewing a car. Yeah. Okay, so let's get it going. So 2022 Subaru Outback I'm not going to smack model. it with my ring this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my jacket button will do it for me. Yeah, true. Okay, uh, the front. Oh, something really cool with this, the headlights, they move side yeah. to side with the, uh, I wonder if I can do it. No. Tell me if I do it. No. Mm -mm. I don't think you, I, uh, listen, I'm telling you. Are you ready, Patty? Well, it, it does it. Oh, that was cool. No. At night? It's when, so good. Yeah, it's so, so good. the road to my house, if you go the back way, it's really curvy road. It's a fun road to ride a motorcycle on. It is, but it legitimately shines the light down the road. So like, I thought like when I read that, I was like, okay, cool, whatever. No. No, Do it's not, cool. It's don't useful. Sleep on it. There's yeah. a button to turn it off if you're a psychopath or something. Uh, so we got the little LED kind of light. Yeah, the LED area. accent lights are on the side, really nice. They look sick. You I don't get that. those on the lower model Subarus. They'll have like a nice shiny piece of chrome there, which is fine, I guess. I know, but if you got this little. But put the LED. It looks cool. It's a good looking thing. We're here for LEDs for um, sure. This is our that rubber area that we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, that earlier. plasticky kind of um, uh, the fascia or the uh, plastic cladding is what they call it. And as you guys can. See, the, the plastic area does kind of like stick out from all the other parts of the car. Mm -hmm. So like naturally, so if you're gonna like you're gonna hit. bump it on stuff. Yeah, it's gonna which is, that uh, hurt. Pretty nice. This is these are our little gold pieces we were talking about earlier. Yep. They're copper. Oh, they're so, copper, Chase. We keep calling them. We keep, silly us. We're calling oh, them gold. They're they're not gold. They're cheap copper. No. Also they're on the cool. Front, uh, we do have that front that front camera that we front were, facing uh, camera we were talking about. Built into your Subaru is your radar. Like built into this logo is the radar sensor. Cool. Which is super cool. We've got our six kind of ring uh, style fog lights down here. Really, really bright. They look good. Yep. Um, some of the Toyota products have a similar design, but I really like how Subaru does it. I really like the front end on this. Yeah. It's like very polarizing. Some people love the black plastic cladding on the side, or on the front, on the sides. The new WRX has it. 
A lot of people hate it. I like it. Really? I think it's a cool look. I didn't know people were, I, I think it gives it a like kind of utilitarian vibe. Yeah, and I think that's what everybody hates about it, which <laughs> like it's a utility vehicle, use it as such. Uh, we have our black hood piece. Yep, the front. matte black hood piece. This is really cool. It's like a, um, it's almost like a sticker. You can feel it. They put it on the outside of the paint. And what this is designed to do is when you're cruising into the sunlight, you can even, you might even be able to see it. Um, that there's not a lot of glare coming off of this. And that's what it's for. It's to prevent glare shining into your eyes when you're knew, cruising down the road or on that. the trail. Yeah. That's amazing. Tell me how petty it is that when I open the hood, I have to do the little like metal rack. Yeah. And yeah. Is that a big deal? I, it annoys the shit out of me. How, okay. So for you, the average owner, oh, when's the last time going. you opened the hood? I have not opened That's my... what I thought. All right. Well, <laughs> that's fair. I love this color. I've been seeing a couple of the black ones. The black ones are not bad. I think the uh, copper accents show off more on the black yeah, model. Yeah, I'll agree with that. But the white's good. The white and black. It's a Stormtrooper. <laughs> yes. It's Stormtrooper. It's yes. very, very cool. Except it can aim. All right. Transition to the side. And we're over to the side. <laughs> I hope that this channel goes for long enough to where I get old and can't do that. Do you, do you notice I don't do that? It's because I'm old and I can't do that. Sweet. Okay, uh, from the side, we got, here's one of our wilderness badges. Yep. There's a few of them. Yep, the, there's kind of the, again, that with the Outback on the side, you see that copper accent yet again, or, which is uh, super cool. The the this is the, like the fender cladding? flares, the plastic cladding is the wow. term that they use for it. All right. Um, you can really see it's quite wide. You saw it from the front. It's actually arched out on the top, which is yeah, really so cool. If you look from the side of the car, you can actually see these are not like they're pushed out a little bit. Yeah. Again. Outside of the mirror, this is the widest portion of your car. Yeah. Um, here's some more of those copper accents, these action points on the rooftop we were talking about. Yep. So that's those two secure hooks that you can use. You can also like strap things to here. I don't know why you would do that, given that you've got these two hooks that are readily available. Use them. Uh, while we're at the side, I gotta say, one of my wife's favorite things about the car is the wheels. The wheels are cool, man. I'm not huge on the six-spoke design. Uh -huh. That's just personal preference. I love that Subaru went with a solid black wheel. They've been doing a black and machined face look on all their vehicles for a really long time. Yeah. I think that's fugly. I hate it. <laughs> I much prefer these wheels. I still don't like that they're six-spoke, but the kind of cool like little notches that they do it's a really great design well so like we're simpletons so it was like if we can buy a car that we already think looks cool so yeah, like easy if you give me cool looking tires and good looking wheels that are blacked out we don't have to upgrade anything yeah like if it hey, ain't broke patty if you will for me uh, just come here come on and, uh, come get into the in the passenger seat Ooh. i got my my door open for me this is so nice oh, you're welcome. all right the concierge service it's so good here it's at so, Subaru. <laughs> here at Subaru and on the on four wheels channel, it's so quiet in here and the door's still open. It is quiet in there. Ooh, you know what's nice about this though? What? Is it's cold out there. It's not in here. Bye bye. So, um, all right. Yeah, I don't really know what to tell him. You guys can still hear me. He cannot. That's the beauty of uh, post production microphones. It's quiet out here now. But no, the interior room in here is fantastic. Again, I'm I'm six three, three hundred twenty five pounds. I'm body legs proportionate. Um, I've got a ton of room. I'll open this door back oh, up. Hey, Patty. Hey, buddy. <laughs> uh, but again, body legs proportionate. I've got plenty of room in here. Feet all the way forward. Uh, I see what you mean by that floor mat situation. It's moving, It right? sucks. I hate that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I feel vindicated now. Um, I do love that Subaru has these, do like the door handles are full. They're not like a drop through like some of other, yep. like Chevys have that. Fords have that. So like I can stick my phone like in there. It's a mini cubby. It's a mini cubby. I can put my phone, my wallet, like whatever, my keys. I can drop them in there while I'm cruising. Right. Not a big deal. It's comfy in here. Yeah, I've got a ton of headroom. And generally, as a big fella with vehicles that have a sunroof like you have, right. you lose two to three inches of headroom okay. when you have that sunroof from like the natural just shape of the roof liner. Right. But a lot of times my head's hitting the roof. And you got no problem in this one. And I got I got no issues. I'm not bonking it at all. The question is, can you fit so comfortably in the back seat? Ooh, good question. I'm gonna leave my seat where it is and see how I fit. Oh, that's a ball thing, Captain. There's a lot of headroom back here as well. Did you know that the rear seats are apparently heated and reclinable? Um, I see that and oh, the oh. recline is good. And yeah, reclined, like my knees are kind of touching the seat in front of me. But I have that. You're on the upper level of a tall guy. Yeah, and I've got that seat pushed really far back. Now that being said, like I'm comfortable, like, yeah. you know, even with my knees like barely touching, I've got plenty of leg room. I mean, the fact that you can recline a rear seat is pretty neat. Reclining a rear seat's nice because I already have a lot of headroom and now I've got, I mean, I've probably got wow, like a good bit. That's a lot. Like almost more than my truck, which is hilarious. <laughs>
God, this is nice. Yeah. Is and it also quiet? The... <laughs> That's not going to get old, folks. I'm sure Chase I can't hear him. At Chase all. can't hear me at all. I can't really hear I him. I see him looking at the camera. No, it's really comfy back here. It's really quiet. Are you quiet. saying anything? Yes. I can't see you and I can't hear you. What? I can't see or hear you. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so back uh, seat's good. Back seat's good. Again, my with my seat being as far forward or far back as it was on the front, right. if I was on a road trip, had my friends with me or just had a bunch of, you know, kids or dogs or whatever in the back seat, I'd move my seat up and still be plenty comfortable in the front and then have even more leg room in the rear. I'm comfortable. All right, uh, that's <laughs> it for the side, I think. And yeah. uh, Oh, we can talk about the tires. Yeah. Talk so about, we'll talk about the tires. We talked about the wheels. We'll talk about these Yokohama Geolander G015 all-terrain trail tires. So I had them. I bought them and put them on a cross track that I had. Oh, you bought them and put them I on. bought them and put them on a I WRX say, that I on had. A, on, a, on a scale of 0 to 10, how much off-roading could I do with these tires? A lot. Really? Like a lot. Interesting. Like they're not going to do well in mud. They do fantastic in snow. Mm -hmm. They're okay in icy conditions. I believe they are three-peak rated. They are mud and snow three peak rated, so they are technically rated for uh, mud, snow, ice, things like that. Cool. So not a big deal. You want to head around back? Let's talk around the back. Wait. Where? Where'd Chase go? What? Hi, buddy. Hey, buddy. What it's you doing? A little cold out here. I just want to take a little rest. Yeah. I, I can fully lay down in the back. I yeah. I mean, great for car camping. It's. You know, is it if nice? If I had a sleeping bag, I could, I could stay back. I mean, I'd imagine so. All right, I'm gonna get All right, well, yeah, no, you, it's cold. It's quiet in there. You just stay in there. Okay, anyway, bye. so we're gonna talk about the rear half of this Subaru Outback. It's a really, really great vehicle. Uh, hold, let me get Chase out of the trunk. <laughs> so, talking about the seats going down, a super cool feature are these little handles. They look like door handles. For actually, they probably are reused door handles from a couple year old Subaru. But go ahead and pull that handle for me. You can pull that handle and the seat will automatically flip forward. So if you're loading crap into the back, um, whether you're at the hardware store, whether you're just loading up your camping site or what have you, you reach in, hit these two little guys, they fold down flat. You don't have to open the door and go yeah. move all the crap out of your seat. And then it's super cool. Another thing I use all the time. Oh, little hangy hook. Yeah, little hangy hooks. Uh, I use it for like groceries a lot of the time. Works I see really over here well. we've got yet another power plug. We do have a power plug. So we've got a 12 volt outlet there. The back seat, we didn't mention it before, you do have two USB outlets in the back seat to charge your phones. Absolutely. Uh, another thing, when we were talking about those floor mats that are made out of rubber. Yep. So we have two in the front. We yep. have two in the middle for the passengers. Yep. And then, and then in the back, got... we have the big middle one, and then we have the side one. The side ones, and then also the back of the seats. <laughs> now, while we have this carpet pulled up, we'll talk about something that's really cool about this wheel and tire combo. Really, really interesting about the Wilderness Edition Outback is it has a full-size spare with that same tire. Absolutely, exact it's, same. It's not a donut. It's not a little like, air compressor kit that some brands are using right now. Um, they give you a full size spare. So if you have a puncture on the trail, you've got a puncture at your campsite, what have you, you can change it and you're not losing traction off that one wheel. Right. Nothing like that. Uh, before we put the back down, we have these updated lights oh, as well. Love these guys. That so. comes in clutch. My wife and I do wedding photography. So at night when we're leaving the wedding, I've got to pack all the camera. Yeah, you want to make sure all your lenses are safe. They've got their caps yeah. on them and everything. It is so bright back here. I, I absolutely, this is a feature that like, again, I didn't think it was a big deal. Yeah. And then going to use it, I'm like, that's game changing. Uh, so to close it, we have a two buttons here. One just closes it, one closes it and locks it. Which oh. is kind of cool. If a key is inside the car, this will literally do nothing. Boop. We'll close it, she'll drop down nicely. You'll hear the lock engage Yep. right there. And then we can see another Subaru Wilderness yep. logo. Yeah, you've got, what I love about the Outbacks, they did the blacked out logos out of the box, which is really nice. They left your standard blue and silver here, which I think is a great look. It's the classic Subaru logo. Yeah. Um, but they did black out your standard emblem. So your Subaru logo, your symmetrical all wheel drive, and then of course your Wilderness and your Outback logo over there. We got the cool lights. I love the way they're blacked the out tail lights. I love yep. the dark tint on it as well, that privacy glass style tint. Absolutely. You've got your little shark fin, so your radio antenna, it's not some big RC car looking thing anymore. I do also appreciate that they have this rubberized area. I don't know if it's rubber or whatever it's material. That this cladding. Is. They've done a really good job of keeping that consistent yep. style all the way around the vehicle. There's nowhere. There's not an angle on this thing where you're like, that's a weird design choice. It's just all yeah. there and it's all really cohesive. The exhaust, I appreciate that there's two and I appreciate that you can barely see them. Yeah, they're tucked up under there. Um, the reason for that is additional ground clearance. 
Um, it's also just so from a manufacturing standpoint, they don't have to worry about how, making it look pretty. There. It's just there and it functions well. And frankly, it sounds good. My, the Crosstrex are like that. The Impreza's are like that. The only vehicle I believe that Subaru does that has a, like an external exhaust that you can see is going to be that WRX. So with the key that they give you, uh, you got lock, unlock, alarm, and then you can actually open up the rear. Oh, yeah. So very similar to how I can drop the tailgate on the Tundra. Same thing. You can open this up. That's been a feature they've had for a couple of years now. Um, it's really, really cool. Cool. Uh, anything else to add to the back before we um, go to the front and finish it up? No, man. I just... I really like these cars. Let's I really, talk about it in a moment. All right. So final thoughts on the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition. Hold on. I have to I have to start this section like you started with your truck. Well, I like it and I bought it. So obviously it's cool. True. <laughs> the video <laughs> over. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, I I love the space. I love the utility. Obviously, I'm a fan of the look. I think the So, hold on, hold on. Before you go on any further, top three things. The space. Yep. Only because I'm new to it is the eyesight. Yep. The auto driving and everything. Super cool. Um, it allows me to really put miles on this car and not get exhausted as yeah, a Yeah, you're driver. not fatigued at the end of a road trip. or. And uh, the interior just experience. Like, as a driver, I'm super comfortable. I've got plenty of space. So that would be my three. What about yours? That's heckin' windy. <laughs> my top three things about the Subaru, I love the, the functionality of it. Subaru spent a lot of time really putting, you know, the right wheels and tires, putting the right cladding in the right spots, changing the bumper to make it a better off-road vehicle, which is super cool. Right. Um, that's number one for me, hands down. Number two, like, the engine. Yeah. Like, to go from a standard Subaru out back, you're talking 160, 170 horsepower, to 260 horsepower, 270 off foot pounds of torque. <laughs> right. It's a huge difference, and it makes this thing not only really fun to drive, like, on the street, it's really comfortable, it's got plenty of passing power, but when you're off-road on a steep incline, and you need that little bit of extra grunt to get up and over an obstacle, it's got it. Yeah. Which absolutely. is fantastic. And then, yeah, the interior is really, really nice. I'm going to agree with you on that point. It's really comfortable you know the spacious. heat it's spacious like i cram everything i could ever want to in the back of this thing and not have to worry about it yeah i think it's a overall solid utilitarian car yep and it happens uh, to look awesome it looks awesome and you still can have a lot of fun with it yep. so like it's it's an overall package like as far as a family car with all the safety ratings oh like, yeah this is like top notch yeah yeah i mean subarus are known for being extremely safe and that's not changed with this outback wilderness what are your least favorite things? And I know you're gonna say the screen, and I'm also gonna say the screen, but what are the other two? I mean, honestly, everything's gonna be in the screen other than the weird eyesight when the road's bad. But like, if the road's bad, I would expect the eyesight to not work, and then I wouldn't use it as a driver. Yeah. So the lagginess of the screen, the organization of the menus in the screen, yep. and the lack of physical buttons for some of the things I want to use as a driver more often than having to go into the screen. So it's all about the screen, honestly. Yeah, so for me, it's it's very much the, the lagginess of that screen. The the menus are fine. I don't, don't have like- a problem with the deepness of it? And all that I, I like that the menus go deep. It gives you a lot of settings to play with. Right. I don't like that, like, if I want to change my heated seat, I've got to hit four different buttons at least right. to get my seat where I want it. And then I have to exit out of that menu, including, you know, that fourth button includes that. Like, I don't want to take my eyes off the road to do stuff like that. Like on my Tundra or on most of the vehicles, if there's a physical heated seat button, like I glance at the button, see what setting it's on, Boom. tap it, like I know where it is, I can tap it, I can yeah. feel it. Absolutely. With a screen, it's just a screen. So my big thing is uh, going through menus to change settings that should be really easy to get at. Right. So kind of into your lack of physical buttons. Yep. Um, the lagginess of the screen is the second thing. The third thing I kind of struggle to come up with, I think my only real complaint, I don't, it doesn't come with a manual transmission. Right. You cannot get, it's CVT only. You got the paddle shifters. You got paddle shifters, and as, we, as I saw earlier, like, I had a lot of fun with them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> a really good time. But I feel like it would be really cool to have a manual transmission in this. They Just offered it in the 90s. Yeah. The Foresters got it up until the mid-2000s. You could get a manual transmission right. with a turbo engine. I would love to see them, like, you know, God save the manuals. I want to see more manual transmission vehicles out there. I understand it's not practical, really, on a station wagon for your family. No. Um, for a $40,000 car, and yeah. our issues are basically give like, us a manual pre option. Give me a, give me a fun pedal yeah. and fix your OS. 
I, that's pretty much a, a, a home that's a win-win -win. yeah. it's it's a very pretty car like it's everything is function so uh at this point i'm i'm super happy with it like i said we we bought it else we wouldn't have done that but yeah. uh you guys let us know in the comments what are your top three favorite things about the car and top three least favorite things and we'll see if there's some sort of cohesion maybe there. yeah i don't know uh <laughs> what are things that we missed uh that's it for this review uh make sure to hit the like button subscribe because we're new and trying to build this thing yeah and i'm chase i'm patty rick and we will see you guys on the other on four wheels review where hopefully it's probably going to be colder we're screwed Shit. <laughs> see you guys on the next one you know just to be clear uh we're excited about this we are we've been filming all day and we are cold also outro crew yeah i'm super pumped i'm having a blast filming this channel it's a lot of fun getting to play with these new vehicles is great i need hot chocolate or cider, <gasps> warm cider. All right, crew, uh, let us know in the comments down below. If you're freezing and you need to drink something hot, what do you drink? Is it hot chocolate, coffee, tea? I'll take it. Apple coffee. cider? I'm taking a cider every time, dude. Actually, warm cider does. Dude, apple cider, some cinnamon, a little bit of brandy. Right, we're, gonna go, we're gonna go grab cider. Yeah! <laughs>